Okay, so during this video, what we're going to be doing is running through our first task uh, for our lab 10 for PN4036. So first of all, I suppose we have to find out what our question is about. So if we go up here, we can see that this is a structural forms question. The reason I know that is because this is a hyperbolite of revolution, which is within, um, I suppose, structural forms itself, the chapter. Um, now, if you look, I suppose, what, um, what it says above here, first of all, before we even look at what's happening below here. So, given in plan are a line AB and CD. These lines represent two elements of a hyperbolite of revolution, the base of which rests in the ground. Okay, so from that, I know that we're drawing a hyperbolite of revolution. These two lines here are elements on our hyperbolite of revolution, as well as that, our hyperbolite of revolution would be resting on our XY line. Now, straight away off the bat, if you are not interacting, I suppose, with, um, with the material itself and learning the different terms in relation to the different chapters, you might be a small bit confused straight off the bat uh, what they're even asking you to do. You have to figure out if you're not too sure what a hyperbolic revolution is or what it looks like um, or information about it, straight away off the bat you'll be confused here because you won't know what it looks like, you won't know what you're drawing, as well as that you won't know what is meant by an element in relation to a hyperbolic revolution. Now, if you're still not too sure right now, what I'd suggest you would do is go off to Anderson's book and have a look at that chapter and have a look at Hyperbolic Revolution and the information that they give you on it. Um, now, I only have the one book uh, edition of Anderson's book. Uh, now, in that goes into plenty detail in relation to this topic. If you have the two edition book, even better, it goes into a bit more detail. Now, if we actually look at what the question is asking us, so if we look here, first of all, it's compare the plan view of the hyperbolic revolution, or sorry, complete the plan view of the hyperbolic revolution. So what we need to do here is find the central point um, so we can draw in our throat circle and our base circle. So straight away off the bat, I know if these are elements that they act as if they're cards to some extent when you're looking down upon them. So I've actually done a small bit of a sketch above here to show you what I mean by when I'm saying that. You can see that this is my throat circle and this is my base circle I just drew in randomly. And then I put these two lines in uh, to make it look a small bit like what we are dealing with below here. So what I kind of want to get across to you is if you basically find the central point here by bisecting the line and do a perpendicular line to that through that the line will travel through the central point here of the circle now you won't actually know where it is along that perpendicular line until you do the same thing to this card over here from c to d what looks like a card it's not actually a card do that again so a perpendicular line from the central point to travel up where they two intersect will be the central point now just to show you that that works i'm just going to do it quickly here to demonstrate it just extend my cups over half so like so same here the same here As you can see, where the two lines intersect is the central point of the circle. So if we apply that now below here, You can see we get our central point there, which is the centre to our circle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in here a small bit so you get a bit of a clear look at what's happening. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is draw my circle for my 
base circle, let's say. Now all I have to do is extend my compass from that central point out to any one of these points, in like A, B, C, or D. And what should happen is when you swing a circle, it should hit you all of them, like you can see happening here. Now, if it's a small bit off of any one of the points, what is there, what has really happened is there's a small bit of inaccuracy in the construction. Uh, it should work perfectly. Now, also, I want to do my throat circle. So that's exactly where these lines touch off of. So as you can see here, um, as you can see on the far side over here, you can see how each of these lines are tangential to the throat circle itself. So I just slide this back into place. I draw my throat circle, which you can see it's just hitting right off of where um, where the central point of the lines are. So you can see. Now what we can do is we can take up, I suppose, the far ends of both circles. And we can take them straight up into our elevation. Like so. Now I just want to do a small bit of labeling here before I do anything else, just to ensure that everything is nice crystal clear. Uh, so this here is going to be our base circle. And then Here's going to be our throat circle. Now, the construction is going to be pretty tight here and things are going to start coming on top of each other. So the best thing to do is just take it in stages, see what I'm doing the first, uh, the first time I'm taking up an element up to construct the elevation. Um, take it step by step. If you look at this just at the end, you'll be overwhelmed with the amount of lines. Uh, just try to get what I suppose I'm trying to get across to you in the first uh, construction, and then I'm just going to be repeating that as the elements will be rotating around the central axis um, of the hyperbolic revolution. Now, I suppose what's important to note here for the second part of the question, where it is asking us to basically draw our elevation itself, it's telling us that throat circle is going to stop at LL here and that's going to be the top of the construction itself. So that means that I actually don't have to, to complete the full uh, hyperbolite of revolution. I just have to do it from the base circle up to the throat, not from the, the base circle up to the throat all the way up to the, to the um, what's the word for it, the um, top circle. So if I take up the ends of the throat circle here now as well, so I know where they are. Now after this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start breaking up my circle with a 60-30. I'm actually not going to carry up um, my elements A and A, B and C, D. The reason for that is because it will confuse matters later um, when I'm constructing it because it won't look so symmetrical. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to divide it up into, I suppose, 12 different sections of my 60-30 and work with that instead and just leave them elements out of it for now. Okay, so now I'm going to do some of the label outside um, around the circle. So I'm just going to call this one right here. It's going to be two. It's going to be three.
all the way down to 12. Okay, so now um, I suppose if you look at your book itself, you'll know that the elements travel all the ways from the base circle all the ways through basically tangential to the throat itself, especially when you're looking at it from elevation, and then go all the way up to the, um, to the top circle. So what we can do now is we can cut that in half. All we know is that we have to construct it as far as it's touching tangential to the circle itself and making contact. So that's all we need here. So if I do that now for my 12 different... So for one, and I'm going to go around the same as they are doing, so A, B, C, D, around that same way. So if I go one to the circle here, gently it's hitting around there. Two tangential circle again around here. See how I'm taking each one of the points and making them tangential to the to the central circle. Um, and I'm indicating where they're touching. They hit tangential. What you do now is I'm going to start leaning around. Get the marker I haven't used. We'll start with one. One's going to the blue one over here. Two is going to two. And two here. Three is going to the blue. Three. Four is going to the blue. Four. Perfect. So now that I have them all basically divided up and all my different elements travelling all the ways to my throat circle here in plan, I will now take them up and reconstruct an elevation. I'll start off with the one. So I can take one up, I know it's starting here. We'll call that one. Take the other one up here, and I could call that one. And I'll draw that line. So, two. linked here with 12 so I'm just going to keep them together
Okay, so when you've all your points taken up uh, for your base circle and marked off below here and keep them labelled and then when you have all these uh, corresponding points that are I suppose heating tangential of the throat circle taken up up to your LL line as you can see above here and you join them up correspondingly you should get um, nearly a perfect mirror image across both sides uh, as you can see here now if there's anything that seems off what I do is I go back and track your points the main thing here is it takes time just ensure that everything's labelled and labelled correctly that you can complete it um, Past that, I suppose the last part of this question is asked you basically to explain key principles that you should know in order to successfully solve this problem. So what I do there is I use the left hand side here. I basically mark in any of the key principles that you think are important when constructing this. Also identify all the key terms. The terms are extremely important here. If you don't know your terms, you won't know how to, to, to work with this question in general or even how to start it. Um, after that, I would like you to put in a small bit of a sketch over here on the left, left hand side, a pictorial sketch showing this, um, I suppose, even the construction of one of the elements. You'll see it in Anderson's book there where it shows one of the elements uh, rotating around um, a central axis of the hyperbolic revolution, which uh, nearly infinite amount of them is what generates that particular curve itself an infinite amount of these generators traveling around uh, as you can see here traveling all the way around the more elements that you have the easier it is to see the curve if i only had four or five here you'd be seeing uh, a lot less detail than what you're seeing now um, but past that um, you have the question completed if you get this far